Hello and welcome back to part 4 in my series of videos about WD Red hard drives. We're comparing the new and the old with the older generation of drives taking advantage of conventional magnetic recording and the newer generation of drives taking advantage of device or drive managed shingle magnetic recording. We've looked at RAID building, rebuilding, we've looked at Synology read performance and today it's the turn of the QNAP. So let's go. Four TBs, and this is the older RX, so the EFRX four TB, and comparing it against the WD four zero EFAX, the newer generation drive uh, with more cache and a few other bits thrown in, along with a lot uh, a long discussed um, DM or device managed shingle magnetic recording. And this is part of a wider series of videos where we're looking at the performance difference between these WD Red drives. Now we've already done testing with Synology to test read speeds and we're going to continue on that theme this time with a QNAP. We've got two 4TB drive, I'm uh, sorry, two fully populated um, QNAP NATIS with the 4TB drives, both of them in a RAID 5 environment, and we've done lots of build and rebuild tests previously. For today's video, we're going to do an ATO benchmark, and we're going to be doing that within a VM. Both of these devices have got a Windows 10 VM installed, as you can see on the left hand side of the screen, the EFRX drive. And if we go into the storage manager, I'll be able to show you that. If we go into that on the other one too, actually, we'll just click it there. If we go into the storage settings, you'll be able to see there is, um, if we go to disks, probably get a clearer view. There is our drive there, and we can see all four disks. All of them are EFRXs. And if we go to the RAID group, there is our RAID 5 environment. And if we do exactly the same on the other one, we can have a look. There's AX, AX, AX. We will be doing a video where we mix these drives up to see what the performance is like with AX and um, RX drives mixed, so old and new gen. But this is just to show you that both of these VMs that we're running right now remotely are using a RAID 5 with their own respective WD Red drives. Now, at the time of recording, this is, as you can see on the screen, around about the end of April. This is still during the self-isolation fun and games of COVID-19. So I'm having to do a lot of the work in today's video remotely. So I apologize first and foremost, if the sound quality isn't quite as good as you'd like. And secondly, if the refresh rate isn't ideal. The NATIS that I've been accessing for this series of videos are some 50 miles away from me today. And in order to get to the desktops in a far more cohesive single portal access point, I am using TeamViewer to access the NAS on a separate terminal. Not ideal, but it does make exchanging files and installing core files a great deal easier. But as we've got this VM up and running, as you can see, if we open Virtualization Station on both of these devices, we can see that it's using 27% uh, of the CPUs on the left-hand one and far, far less on the right. The right one going into a little bit of hibernation there, which we will refresh. That will probably spike up those numbers substantially. So, and again, remember the refresh on screen is largely down to that of the way we're accessing the NASes today. So I apologize for that slight drop in frame rate. So we've got them here on screen. We've set these both of these up in a very similar architecture. So if we make our way over to the um, account management or the VM manager, and we have a look at both of these VMs while they're running right now, we'll be able to see that the settings on both of them, we've tinkered with it a little bit. This is one of the free VMs you receive, and it's two cores of the CPU inside, that Intel Celeron, and four gig of memory on both of them, both of which are utilizing, if we make our way to the storage volumes, we can see that both of these VMs are utilizing just over two terabytes of storage space and not using any form of caching and are SATA in their virtual architecture. So there you go, this is the VM that we are running for our Atto benchmark. And again, could have flashed it on screen, but I'm sure you guys would have wanted to see. Now we're gonna run three individual Atto tests on both of these virtual machines. And as you can see, IP148, virtual machine 148. On the right hand side 141 and the nas is 141 so now we are on the desktop of both of these virtual machines and it is an evaluation copy that you can get for free with your copy of qnap uh, qts but of course it is an evaluation copy i think it's about 90 days it runs for so if we open up atto disk mark on both of these nases 
And again, these are virtual fields of these two NASes on the same network environment. We're not going to be bottlenecked by one gigabit Ethernet here. This is all running within the NAS. But it's worth highlighting that this is going to be a read cache test, not a write test. Because, because of the architecture of virtual machines running within the NAS, accessing the drive at the same time, the write values are going to be pretty terrible in this architecture. So because of that, we are only looking at the read today. Don't try to look at the write because the numbers you're going to see are terrible. So ignore those because of the architecture in the way in which we're accessing the NASes today. We are focusing on the read. So the first test, we're going to use um, a standard 64 meg file. Then we're going to make our way up to um, half a gig. And then finally, we're going to end on one gig to see how all three of these run in uh, how they do compare but do bear in mind that uh, with these drives a more sustained read write throughput will probably give you better results this is a snap test and should be treated as such but for now as you can see we're also going to look at the iops although they're less relevant on a raid test of hard drives but let's get both of these respective atto benchmarks up and running remember the RF, I'm sorry, the RX drives on the left and the AX drives on the right. I fully anticipate the right hand side of the screen performing faster overall. But we'll have a look. Let's fast forward to the completion of test one of using Atto Disk Benchmark of these two generations of WD Red drives in a RAID 5 environment. And as the test draws to a close, we've already seen that the AX drives are at least completing their test a mite bit quicker. And if we look at those read results, the read results are significantly higher too. Now, as the um, RX test draws to a close, let's take a little look at the read speed, not the write. As mentioned, this is not a test that's going to give us anything good from write. These write speeds are not indicative of these drives, but the read speed is pretty good. I mean, just looking at those drives, we can already see that the read speed on the AX drives is a good 100 to 150 megabytes um, towards the end of the test in terms of overall speed and performance at a 64 megabyte test file level. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very quick screenshot of this and we'll use that later on just to take a good idea about the speed and performance that we've been looking at here. And for now, let's start the second test. This time we're going to be utilizing a half gigabyte file. Um, that's not the right value. We're going to go into a half gigabyte file. So that's 512 megabytes. And we're going to run this exact same test. And again, we're going to start off with one on the left and start test two of these WD Red drives on these QNAPs. And it will get ready to initialize the test. While it does that, I will get ready to save these results. And this is going to be test one. We can see these Atto benchmarks. I've been running on another NAS there in the background. And this is the QNAP TS453BE RX versus... versus AX WD Red HDD RAID 5 test 1 and there we go save that there for later on and we'll begin our next stage of testing there on the screen so as we can see the second stage of testing is resuming right now and even using that screenshot that we've just taken if we minimize it a little bit there we can see how both of these compare. If we look at how the uh, current RX test compared with the pre its predecessor, we can already see that the performance values are a little higher on this bigger size file. Whereas if we make our way over, oh no, we didn't want to do that, drawing a big old line on there. If we make our way over to this other side of the screen, we can have a look at how the test is being conducted here. Do bear in mind at the end of the test, we will of course be looking at IOPS as well, although we're not really going to be measuring IOPS too much on a hard drive array. We should be getting somewhere between 10, or well, no, up to 10, probably more likely four to 5,000 IOPS in this RAID array, because it is a RAID 5, and therefore the numbers are going to be a little bit less. But we can see 
that the values have decreased on this second array and started to grow as the test has continued. But let's bring that down. And for now, let's fast forward to the completion of test two of the WD Red Drives in this Atto benchmark test. And now the second test is drawing to a close and this time the right hand NAS, the AX Drives, has um, definitely dipped a little bit in terms of performance compared to its predecessor. And what we've started to see is the read speed on the older generation drives has actually started to overtake it ever so slightly. Now there's loads of factors for this and we will look into this a little bit more in the background. And of course it is worth highlighting that during this test we are working within this NAS field. These results are only as relevant as the test environment that we are in. This is not going to be a standard test benchmark that you would get in most scenarios. We're just trying to create scenarios in which users would be utilizing these drives. We'll even be looking at some transcoding and multimedia functionality in a later video. But for now, looking at these results as they are, again, ignoring the right, we can see that this time those speeds are living more in the hundreds when they reach the very top of their limits. If we go and look at those results from earlier, we saw speeds there up to 500 megabytes per second because we, we were dealing with a smaller file format. That said, I would have hoped to have seen numbers slightly higher than this because these numbers here, around 100 to you know 150, I think, on the outside here, um, were less than I would have liked. And although we are dealing with a file size significantly higher of 64 meg in comparison to that of 512 megabytes, it's still less than I would have liked. Um, I am pleased to see that the older generation RX drives did give us some quite good and comfortable sustained performance throughout this test. And the final test is going to be when we look at this with the one gigabyte test file. That's going to be 1000 megabytes. And based on what we're seeing here, evidence would suggest that the read speed is going to be better on the older generation drives than it will be on the newer generation of drives. Now, because I've been looking at this performance, I'm this time, when we do the next part of the video, although I'm going to start the beginning to show the read and write actions taking place on screen, this time I'm going to be switching back to the NAS and displaying the performance of these NASs in real time. Now, this is only going to be performance insofar as the NAS's own hardware. We're going to break down what we're seeing on screen with these NASs using the resource monitor. With the resource monitor, we should be able to take a good look at the storage utilization there in the background and get some idea about the RAID activity and pool activity happening in the background on these disks. And this should give us some idea about how much work um, is the NAS is going through, but, but moreover, just how much these hard drives are being put to task. So if we switch back to both of our VMs, we can see that um, Atto Benchmark in Test 2 has completed. Overall, I would say the performance numbers have been greater on the older generation EX RX drives for Test 2. So technically, it's one all. So for our next test, as mentioned, we're going to make our way up to one gigabyte. This one gigabyte test file here is how we're going to see how these two NASs perform on this largest of files in our test range. We're going to click start there. We're going to click start there. And it's going to start initializing for our tests. Now, as mentioned, I'm going to mention this. I'm going to double check that the tests are taking place. This will be a much slower test overall because we are dealing with a much much bigger test file and that will mean this test will take a great deal longer the more eagle-eyed of you might be able to keep your eye on the clock to give you some idea about just how long this is going to take before i speed up some of these recordings now we can see on the right hand side of the screen the ax has just started its speed test there in the background with the rx beginning so now we're making our way into the test beginning i'm going to switch over to disk utilization happening right now within this RAID group of each NAS. So right now we can look at individual disk activity if we so choose, and that would be for each individual disk, but that wouldn't be as useful to us. What we want to monitor is that RAID configuration 
that we created. And that disk utilization will creep up throughout this test. So let's switch back to you and we can take a good look at the utilization of these disks in real time. And then I'll switch back to the Atto benchmark on the VMs for the final part of this video. Keep an eye on the write and read speeds throughout this. And we're reaching the end of test three, and indeed close to the end of this video. And unsurprisingly, as mentioned earlier on, the RX series of drives do seemingly have um, given us the best performance overall. Although I will say, at the beginning, I did start to think that the AX series of drives were giving us the very best performance, particularly given that larger amount of cash per disk. Something that seemingly, just based on what we're seeing here, we have to suspect that the RAID 5 configuration wasn't able to take advantage of. So, even before this test ends, let's once again remind you that these results are based on this test environment. They are not indicative of all tests. They are indicative of this test and how this scenario, which we've created with both of, of, the, of these devices in a two-core, four-gigabyte um, virtual machine environment, that this is what we've seen using Atto Benchmark. When we do our external testing utilizing 10GBE, we will begin different results. But in this environment, there it's just impossible to ignore the simple case that there is somewhere around 100 megabytes of difference in those larger file types as we've proceeded through the test cycle. On top of that, if we are even if we are ignoring write and not really considering IOPS. If we take a look at the IOP spectrum, we can see how these two drives have compared in terms of overall IOPS. Now, once again, I'm just going to refresh that there because I've had the window open for quite a long time. If we look at the IOPS, we can see that the IOPS performance was higher at the start, certainly on the AX series of drives, and as we move through, we can see that the read um, IOPS was certainly higher. And again, IOPS aren't really something we're going to point out too much on hard drives in a RAID 5 with four bays, but perhaps if we were looking at a NAS that's got somewhere in the region of 8 to 10 to 12 drives and they were enterprise level drives, then perhaps we would see slight performance differences. Case in point, if we look at some of the test results I made earlier, taking advantage of an 8 bay drive for a video we've got coming up very, very soon. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to open it up on there. Let's have a look. Let's find our test marks for the video that we're working on here in the background. If we look at the IOPS of a RAID 0 here, we can see 10 and 12, but this is obviously from a much, much bigger array of VM testing, taking advantage of a Ryzen-powered 8-bay NAS. So you can get a lot more out of enterprise-level drives in a bigger RAID array, and in terms of speed and performance, these have still been respectable, particularly when we've been looking at these larger file types. And it is worth bearing in mind that larger file types, particularly in this age of 4K, and particularly virtual machines and ISOs and media images, this kind of speed is pretty respectable. I know if we was doing a random read-write test of small, you know, tiny little collections of files like Office Docs, this number would be higher, as we saw earlier in the test. But this has been an Atto Benchmark read test utilizing QNAP NAS and the WD Red WD40 EFRX and the WD40 EFAX series of drives. We'll be doing some more write testing next on our next videos in this series, and we will be looking at overall towards the end of this long, long series of videos just how the old and new generation of WD Reds do compare. Otherwise, do click like if you've enjoyed this, click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you on the next video.